Okay, hi guys. So this is the first video I'm making outside. Um, I do apologize that it's windy, so hopefully this comes out okay. This video is going to be a quick book review of two books I recently read called Toxic Charity, and then the other one is called Portfolios of the Poor. So basically the reason that I'm interested in those types of things is because I do like to do some charitable things, and I just want to make sure that I am not harming anybody by participating in certain charities. If you're new to this channel, make sure you click the subscribe button below. Um, give this a thumbs up if you can and leave a comment, if, especially if you've read these books or you would like to. So I just have some notes on my phone of a couple points that I would like to make. I'm sorry if my eyes are a little bit squinty from like the sun being outside. Um, so toxic charity, one of the things I learned is that reciprocal relationships are better than free things. Meaning most people want to feel like they participated in earning something or they earned something. Um, and there have been some kind of experiments done where people feel, people want to feel like valued customers instead of charity cases. So there have been, um, people who looked at like free clothes closets where people donate clothes and then you can go in and pick them up for free like from a church or something versus buying them super cheap from somewhere like a Salvation Army or a Goodwill or something of that nature. And people feel better about themselves when they have purchased something even if it is cheap because then or discounted because then they feel that they have kind of provided for themselves and their families a little bit. Same thing goes for food banks. Some people have found that having a food co-op is a lot better for people to feel that they have provided somehow for their family instead of just going to get like a bunch of free food. That's not to say that those things are bad, but there are a time and a place for, you know, giving getting, receiving free things, but there's also a, many times where people would prefer to feel that they have contributed to purchasing things. So that's just something to think about. And the author in the book brought up a case where he had moved into a low income neighborhood, which is something I'll get into in a minute. And he found that there was one night, it was Christmas Eve, and a bunch of people came over to drop off presents to this low-income family. And the children were super excited, and the father had to leave the house because he almost felt like emasculated and that he couldn't provide the gifts for his children, that he had to rely on these free handouts. They had actually put together some jobs for the fathers to do and people had donated some toys and then the organization put discounted price tags on the toys and then the fathers could buy the gifts and they felt a lot better about it like they provided for their family they worked and they bought something and so that's something to just think about when you're you know doing charities and it got me thinking about to when I donated uh, gifts for Christmas this year and it actually wasn't like handed as a gift from me to the child it actually was given to the charity and then I bought specifically for a child but then the charity gave it to like the parent and then the parent could have wrapped it and said it was from them or whatever and that's perfectly okay with me like they want to feel that they can provide for their children and I think that's a, a very common feeling all around the world the book also brought up doing with instead of for so there are a lot of a lot of cases worldwide where people usually white your white um, Western people Americans Europeans go into a community and think that they know everything about how to help this community and the author actually lived in a downtown Atlanta Georgia community in the United States which was predominantly black and people kept coming in just thinking that they knew what this community needed and how to help them and it never worked and he the author of the book found that when you just sit there and listen to the people and the people who are actually living it day to day and they tell you what it is that they need like work with them what they need don't just assume that you know what they need because chances are you probably don't like you're not living it day to day and you don't know what their struggles are you can assume you can study you can read books but you never know until you're actually the one there. 
And I think those were the biggest points that I got from the book Toxic Charity. And it's a really easy read. I read it in a couple hours. Um, it, it's not very academic. So I definitely recommend taking the time to read that if charity things are something that you're interested in. Now the other book I read, Portfolios of the Poor, it was a little bit more dense. It was a little bit more academic. But I also got a lot of good points out of it. It just took me longer to read and comprehend. <laughs> So this book had a lot of studies that were done in the early 2000s, but there were a lot of common themes amongst all of the families. Now this book studied people who lived in slum areas of South Africa, Bangladesh, and India. And basically what they did was the researchers got to know these families and got the families to trust them. And at the end of the study, yes, the families did get compensated for participating. but. During the study, which was about a year long, they got the families to not write down because a lot of them couldn't read or write, but they found that a lot of families did their banking in their head mentally and they just talked about it all the time about who owes who what and how much they spent and how much of a loan they need for this thing. And so the researchers would go visit the houses, the study participants every like two weeks, I think, and the family would recite to them what they had spent their money on, what they had bought, what they had sold, what money they made, and things like that. And so the researchers were able to keep portfolios of everything and study those. Um, a common theme and something that was actually surprising to me was that every single participant study household had a savings, even for people who made the equivalent to 60 US dollars a month. So that was in early 2000. So these people make the equivalent of about um, 100 US dollars per month, which is very minimal. Obviously, the cost of living is lower in Bangladesh. The 100 number, I'm sorry, the 60 to 100 number came from Bangladesh. They made a little bit more money in India and a little bit more in South Africa. Some of that has to do with the cost of living, but also it's still not enough. Even though the cost of living is lower, it's not enough money. Almost every study participant tried to save about 20% of their saving, tried to save about 20% of their money, which is really extraordinary, I think, when you're living on $60 a month and you're trying to put away four bucks a week. I mean, that's a lot of money. If you just calculate on your own what you make and what you put away and what you spend, I personally am at about 20%, but it's not super, it's not a super easy thing to do, even when I have enough to cover all of my basic needs and then some. Um, sometimes people borrow just to save, which it sounds funny when you read it like that, but then you think about how you might borrow money, you might take out a loan, but you still have a savings account. You might take out a loan to buy a car, but you might still have money saved in your bank or in your house, right? So everybody does the same thing financially, even people who have very low incomes, they operate much like people of higher incomes or in more developed countries do. So access to debt is a really important thing for people to have. And I never really thought about it like that, but access to debt, I mean, sometimes people just need a little bit of money to buy something. So I have access to debt, right? I took out a loan to buy my house. It doesn't mean that I don't deserve to have a house because I didn't have $200,000 to just buy a house. It just means I had access to debt and I will pay it. Same thing for people who are low income. They may just need a little bit of access to debt, but they do work and they do have income and they can still pay off their debt little by little, just like you and I do for houses or cars or credit cards or whatever it is that you use. Most people have some type of debt and it needs to be okay for people of lower income comes to have access to debt and to also carry some debt. So as far as access to debt, a lot of there are a lot of small microfinance institutions who operate in a lot of different countries. A big well-known one and one that I donate to personally is called Kiva, K I V A. I will link it below. Um, but basically what you do is you can sort through and select and I have given $25 loans. $25 is only a portion of the loan. A lot of times they're seeking a few hundred to maybe a thousand dollars, which to you and me might not sound like a ton of money, but that loan is a, t is a ton of money to them. Just like $200,000 is a ton of money to me, but I got a loan for it for my house, right? So. 
you it's crowdsourcing so Kiva is crowdsourcing loans basically and so I put in $25 a bunch of other people to put in 25 50 100 dollars and then these people are able to have a loan and then pay it back and it helps them start a business to give some capital and things like that are just so important to and with the loans people are also taking ownership of their own money because they have to pay it back it's not just a free handout now again there are times and places where it's appropriate to have a free handout but a lot of times people do want to take ownership and feel responsibility in a lot of people do like to take out loans even if they are in less developed nations and then work to pay it back and it helps them feel that they worked for something and they earned it another thing to note is a lot of people especially in like Bangladesh and slum areas of India don't really invest in housing because a lot of places where they live they burn down they flood they get cyclones and it's just not stable and it's not worth you know buying a more expensive roof for your house when it's probably susceptible to being burned down or something anyway so a lot of people invest in some other things now motorcycle sometimes people do but sometimes people don't because it's not necessarily safe to have one of those sitting outside of your house so people invest in other things like um one of my kiva loans was a sewing machine to a woman so that she could start a clothing business so that she could sew more than she sews by hand by having an electronic sewing machine and she's able to ha start up a little business and things like that so people tend to invest more in those types of entrepreneurial things farming equipment animals even so that they could um, breed them and sell them sell eggs for chickens so just because they're not using the loan for something that you think they should be using a loan for or something that you don't think is an appropriate use of money they are living a different world than we are and any loan any access is really going to be good for them it's never going to be harmful um, a lot of people have some very sophisticated saving systems so just like you and me we or at least in the United States we pay into our health insurance we pay into our life insurance we I pay into an HSA for um, some of my medical procedure coverage and I could just keep the money in my paycheck and then put it away in a closet or whatever you know the $15 every week that I put into my HSA but it's a lot easier to just have it taken out of my paycheck and put to an HSA. And so even people of lower incomes, they operate the same much that you and I do in that they participate in savings clubs. So they'll take $5 when they have it and they'll put it into, you know, somebody like a treasurer who has a savings club and save it. So, I mean, the biggest thing really through me talking about this is that people of lower incomes operate much the way people of higher incomes operate. Um, South Africa was a little bit different because they do get a government stipend much like Social Security if you're an older person. So they do have a little bit more um, reliable of an income. However, for some people their check comes on the first of the month and some people it comes on the 15th of the month. And so what a lot of people did was they kind of pooled like half of their check and gave it to somebody and then when somebody else got their check on the 15th they would give their friend the other half so that people always had a more steady income and a steady income is something that a lot of people take for granted like I get a paycheck every two weeks it's the same exact amount same for my husband it's really easy for us to budget but when people don't get um, a steady income it's a lot more difficult for them to manage their money and a lot of people in rural poor communities i mean even in the united states even in the developed world there are people who don't have regular incomes um in a lot of the study participants they did jobs like farming and things like that and so they would only have an income for a few months of the year and then they wouldn't have an income and they would have to be very careful about how they saved and how they spent and how they um, divvied out their money so that they could last through those drought months when they didn't have any income. So I, you know, basically the moral of this is be very careful about when you give to charity 
don't just assume that people want handouts because a lot of people don't a lot of people want to feel like they earned their way a lot of people even with a very low incomes have savings plans and they work really hard to make sure that their family's needs are met and then the last thing would be if you can give then give especially to an organization like kiva and to help a person earn a business and earn a loan and pay it back so i hope that was helpful please leave any comments below if you have any and until next time